I think you should study the humanities because uh, as human beings, we, we live in our imaginations, um, that we understand ourselves through images and through a sense of what other people are like. But we have a hard time reflecting on the assumptions that we make when we live in those images. And so when you read a great work of literature or a great work of philosophy or political theory, it allows you to um, imagine what the lives of other people are like and it allows you to um, see things from a different point of view, which at first can be seem kind of frightening or threatening or hard to you know, wrap your head around. But once you start, it, it kind of really allows you to see thing, aspects of your own self and your own personality that you didn't know were there before. And so it's part of the overall project, which I think is really the heart of the university of um, trying to acquire some degree of self-knowledge so when you read a book like Jane Austen's Emma, for example, um, Emma is a person who um, thinks that she's smart and she is smart, um, but she doesn't realize that she really is completely out of touch with herself and she doesn't realize how she's coming across to other people. And so part of the drama of the book is her discovery that she has, um, she's been a tyrant. She's been an awful person. I mean, uh, Emma Woodhouse, uh, I think you have to say is a trash person in some way. And, and part of the drama of the book is her coming to realize that. And there's just something that, that is moving because we all do that to one extent or another. And to be able to think about that process in someone else's life, is just an invaluable gift. Um, it's really hard to do it to yourself. It's easier to see it in other people. So I just think it's part of the, the, um, the process of coming to know yourself. That's why it's worthwhile to study the humanities. Invisible Man, I think, is in the running to be um, maybe the great American novel. And I'm not ready to say that for sure, but but it's definitely up there in the in the, the top rank. Um, and I think it's in the running to be the great American novel because it's about the great American topic, which is race. Um, and we all know that um, the founders left the country with this incredible problem, this moral contradiction at the heart of the regime that the regime was founded on the equality of human beings, but also the practice was not in accord with the equality of human beings. Um, the Civil War freed the slaves, but that was only the beginning, right? That's only the beginning of the real struggle over how do black people and white people and other kinds of people relate to each other in, in the country. So um, Ellison um, is um, taking that topic on uh, and he is, um, I think the great thing about Ellison is that he has this incredible ambition that he is an African American, and that's a he's trying to think through that experience, which is an experience that that we need to think through as Americans. Um, and I think especially today, when when um, race is very much in the headlines, um, but he has a deeper ambition, which is he's trying to use um, the African American experience as a way of revealing truths about the human condition more generally. And that uh, the Invisible Man is a character that one of the you know things that people pick up on very quickly is that he doesn't have a name. No one ever. We never learn his name in this book, which is which is a profound uh, fact. Um, and um, Invisible Man uh, is somebody who is not seen by the rest of the world, and that's partly because of his race, right? That that people can only see him within the. Um, narratives that they have in their heads about what does it mean to be a black man in the United States. Um, and so that's that's something that we all need to think about in the way that we, when we first meet someone, we can only see them through particular narratives. But I think Invisible Man has another problem, which is that he can't see himself. Um, he can't, um, he isn't aware of the ways in which his own naivete is leading him into dangerous and you know, foolish and, and misguided situations. And so the struggle of the novel is, will Invisible Man ever, you know, forget about the rest of the world, will he ever be able to take possession of himself and really assert his own moral agency in the world, which I think is the great theme of every, every great work of art in one way or another. Um, the great thing about Ellison is that his ambition is so big He's, um, he's not simply trying to be the guy who tells another story about how black people have had it bad in the United States. He's trying to use that story to compete with Dostoevsky and with Jonathan Swift and with Henry James and with William Faulkner and Mark Twain 
Um, and he understands them all to be part of a common project. And the common project is somehow to say the truth about what does it mean to be a human being. Um, and that to me is just an, a tremendously exhilarating um, thing to do. The book is, is incredibly fun. Um, it's a long book, but it, but it goes quickly and there's lots of drama and uh, images that, that call out for us to interpret them. Um, and I just think that it's, it's a tremendously affirmative thing to do in a time when it feels like talking about race is the most painful thing for us to do. So I just, I just think it's a wonderful thing to be reading at this, this moment in American history.